my crew let's go it's mine please don't let me disgrace he says it's impossible the temptations of my past but i know it's possible i know i've been missing for a couple of days but y'all i literally been sick like i don't know what's going on with me what's going on with my immune system but if y'all have any recommendations or something that i can take to like strengthen my immune system y'all please leave it down in the comments below for me because that girl needs some help i literally was sick last week monday tuesday and wednesday i got over that little sickness or whatever i had like a bad like head cold like i got over that little sickness and then boom saturday i was sick again like i caught this random ass stomach virus y'all like i was literally defecating and vomiting at the same time like for days couldn't barely sleep stomach tore up like i had got food or liquor poisoning like i don't know what happened i'm really thinking i had got liquor poison but i'm not sure but yeah i really was flat out sick and i'm just like is my immune system low because i'm usually not i don't get all back to back sick like this i haven't seen my mechanic in a while so no it's not a baby so anyways as promised i promised to give y'all two story times this week also followed by a vlog next week so i had to fight through that to get y'all what y'all need first of all i was complaining on live the other day and i was like yeah i feel like my videos are stuck at six or seven hundred views like it's just like i just can't get my videos to 1k views no matter what i do and drum roll please to my last story time is at 1400 views and it may not be 100k it may not be 140k but hey it's what i wanted and the bible says do not despise small beginnings so we're not gonna just over skip the fact that that girl hit a thousand views one day it's gonna be 140k but today it's 140 not 140 1400 1400 so thank you guys so much for that i appreciate y'all for showing me so much love and, and to everybody that's coming from tiktok to my youtube mwah, my faves so today i'm gonna give y'all this story time of when this actually wasn't the first time i saw someone get on a live in front of me this wasn't the first time i had been involved in a shootout but this is going to be one of those times i'll tell y'all that i saw somebody get on a live in front of me so this happened back in like the early early 2000s i was like 10 years old maybe 9 or 10 years old i want to say i was like 10 years old because i was approximately seven when i was officially removed out of the custody of my mother because y'all know my sister was tragically unalived at the age of three um my, my other brother was four my other brother was six and i was seven so we was officially moved out of the custody of my mom but we was always with her like we would spend weekends with her we would spend summer vacations with her like holidays and stuff we was all we would always spend with her and this i want to say i can't really remember what it was y'all it was like either summertime it was probably like fourth of july or a memorial weekend something like that i remember it was big because we were living in liberty city now if you're not from miami you're not familiar with liberty city but you watch first 48 liberty city is basically that area where the pork and bean projects is that's called liberty city so we lived the pork and bean project sit off 62nd street but we lived on 61st street there was these three-story townhouse building town i mean these three-story apartment buildings that was in the back of we it was three stores that sit on 62nd street where y'all probably seen on first 48 where people will always be killed at but we lived in an apartment building that was directly behind one of those stores and it was called the middle store this was on 61st and 13th so anybody that's from miami y'all already know what i'm talking about if you're not from miami it was the heart of the gutter so at this time we lived in these apartments and i never forget we lived in apartment nine for some strange reason my memory when it comes to tragedy is so vivid that it's scary like i could barely remember all the good times from my childhood because my mind is so stuck on all the tragedy that happened and i know that it's not really a good thing but that's just how my life went like that's just how my mind is i don't know like i be trying to shake that and trying to remember but it's like i literally vividly can remember everything bad that happened to me in my childhood so we lived in these apartments now it was one of these holidays i can't remember which holiday it was but my mom had a habit of always leaving us home alone 
my mom felt like I was just so mature and I was just such a big sister that I was just able to always just stay in the house with my brothers and watch my brothers and that's what she would do which this was the same thing that happened when my sister was tragically unalive we were left in the house alone I am rather mature I'm not gonna lie like I was really really mature but I was still a child like you can't take away the fact that I was a child so at this time my mom had left us in the house I remember it being a holiday because I remember everybody celebrating like I could just remember there was this house called a greenhouse and a greenhouse was a house where it was like a, a inherited house and it was like a family dope house so people would go there to play dominoes play cards in the backyard like people would literally run up in there and, and like shoot up everybody in there like so many people died in that house like that was just a house where like it was called the greenhouse it sat on the corner we lived in apartments across the street from the greenhouse so i remember this holiday i can't remember what holiday it was but i know it was a holiday that it was so many people partying because they had a dj in our building it was people partying at the greenhouse and everybody was just like walking the streets drinking getting high all the kids was outside playing we had like water guns and stuff it may have been fourth of july we had like water guns and stuff like that like we was just outside playing so when i was younger i was a tomboy like real bad anybody who know me know that i was a real bad tomboy to the point where even right now today when people see me they be swearing to god that they thought i was gonna be a dyke like when i was younger i was a real bad tomboy and we used to play this game called high and go hunch when i was little so high and go hunch is basically like you know hide and go seat when you go high and somebody found you you just found you just get found but back in my days in Miami, I'm from Miami, in case y'all don't know, I said it a couple of times in my videos, but I'm from Miami. High and go hunch was basically like boys against girls, so the boys will count while the girls run. And then, if you get caught, you get hunched by all the boys. Y'all put some little kinky little motherfuckers in here. So, basically, if you get caught, all the boys are basically double team hunch you, right? So, I used to hate getting hunched. Like, I never used to like getting hunched. I remember to this day, I got a, a mark in the bottom of my foot from when we stayed in the Polka Beans, which is the actual project that's across the street from these apartments, what I'm telling y'all about. When we stayed in the Beans, I had got hunched, and I ran so bad, I stepped on a dry bone. They had to take me to the hospital, ruined the whole night. And I stepped on a dry bone, I had to get stitches in the bottom of my foot. This how bad, this how serious I took high and go hunch. I did not play by getting hunched, right? Even when I used to get caught, I always used to get so mad that I try to fight all the boys. Like, and I knew how to fight real good, so I fight all the boys whenever I get caught. Like, I was a very, very bad, so I lose that high and go hunch. I remember vividly the people, Eric, his sister Erica, God bless the dead, they, they mama and daddy was DJs. I remember this like yesterday, like it's so crazy. It was my brothers, it was like all us in the apartments, right? My mama never would be home, never. Like my mama walked the streets up and down the street, up and down the street all day. I feel like she used to be looking for my stepdaddy now that I got older because my stepdaddy was one of a kind. Just drinking natural ice, being messy and getting high, that's all she used to do. So how the three story was back in the days, it's actually not like this anymore, but how it used to be back in the days was, it was a three story building and it had a gate around it, right? And the gate that was around it, it had like a fill in between that gate and then it was another gate around that. And the gate that was around that, that was actually on the outside, it was this lady that was the maintenance lady upstairs. I wanna say her name was Miss Liz. This was the same lady that if y'all remember that story time where I was telling y'all about how DCF had came to the had came to our house and I had got in trouble because I was trying to take up for my mama and the lady downstairs was supposed to be watching us. The lady downstairs ended up being the, the same lady, the rent lady over these apartments that I'm telling y'all about now. Ain't that something? So the gate on the outside of that, you had to be buzzed in. So the rent lady, she would just sit at home all day being messy with her the slow family everybody was just slow in the family and she would have to buzz you in so once you get buzzed in that gate you walk through it's like a little field piece right here like a little small little field piece where you could just like walk around the back of the building or whatever but you can only walk around if you inside that part of the gate but once you get in that gate you got to come through another gate now to get inside the apartment building where we live there right so boom we playing high and go hunch. So as we playing high and go hunch, we playing not only inside the apartments, but we playing on the outside of the gate too. So as we playing high and go hunch, mind y'all, remember there's a gate on the outside that you have to be buzzed in. Now there's cars lined up because this is the ghetto. Like everybody just park anywhere, pull up, pull their chairs out and just party. So mind y'all, there's a truck. I'll never forget. It was a green 
Ford Explorer truck. And there's these guys that's sitting like right there on the outside of the building. So we out there playing and these guys just sitting out there, they drinking, they barbecuing, they eating. Cause mind y'all, they was barbecuing at the greenhouse. They was barbecuing in our building. This is why I feel like it was the 4th of July. So they barbecuing in our building. They barbecuing at the greenhouse. They're, everybody just outside the gate drinking. Everybody coming in and out the gate. Like, you know, they just, it's just a regular normal day. But this is Liberty City. Let's not forget. So, boom. We sitting on, we running outside the gate or whatever like that. And all of a sudden, my mama must have been somewhere nearby. My mama had to be somewhere nearby because she came so fast when this happened. So she had to be somewhere nearby. All of a sudden, these two men started arguing. Now, I'm on the side of the building hiding because I don't want to get hunched. So, I'm on the side of the building hiding. Like, I done found me a hiding spot. My job, it was this little piece in the gate where you could kind of run through the gate and you could go through the gate and go to the store. So, I kind of, like, ran through the gate to try to... I used to always run through the gate to go hide, like, by the store and stuff like that so I won't get hunched, right? I don't got no business being at the store, no business going through that gate, just being bad. I hear... As I'm coming through the gate, I hear the commotion between the, the men. And I'll never forget the song that was playing. This is so strange and crazy how I can remember stuff vividly, especially tragedy. I can remember it so vividly to the point where I let nobody tell me that I don't know what I be talking about or I don't remember what I be talking about. Y'all remember that song that went, um, Yellow Viper, Yellow Hummer, Yellow Benz, Yellow PC Cruisers, Yellow Lack, All Being All Ends. I don't know how I go, but it was a song back in the days, and the song went like that. Yellow Vipers, Yellow Hummers, Yellow Benz, Yellow PC Cruisers, Yellow Lack, All Rims, or some, All Ends, or something like that. That's the song that was playing when this happens. The DJ was DJing that exact song as this was happening. I will never forget. Like, I remember everything. Nobody could play me about my memory. I swear to God. So now, as I'm coming back through the gate, mind y'all, everybody else getting caught. Like, everybody else that got caught, they hiding behind trees, hiding behind the walls, hiding under the staircases and stuff like that. And I'm coming through the gate because I don't ran to the stores to make sure I don't get caught. My brother, them over there hunching girls and stuff like that. I'm coming through the gate. As I'm coming through the gate, now, let's just say this is the building, right? So the front of the building faces 61st Street. The back of the building is towards 62nd Street. The three stores sit on 62nd Street, right? So the building is here because the three stores back here and the building is here. So I don't ran, came through to go to the stores that's back here, but everybody else is at the front. Now, the argument between the men go down at the front up here. That's in the front part of the building. So, I come back through the gate. When I get back through the gate, I, as I'm coming around the block, I see the men going back and forth. Like, they going back and forth. I'm wrong. A car pulled up. As I'm coming through the gate, I remember the car pulling up. A car pulled up. And when the car pulled up, I'm guessing that the man jumped out that car. So, when the car pulled up, I'm coming around the corner slowly, but I'm a child. I'm not thinking that these men finna shoot each other whatever the case may be i'm coming around the corner slowly because i got snacks in my hand from the stove i just don't want to get hunched so as i'm coming around the corner slowly my mama and another lady is walking up the sidewalk they coming up the sidewalk i guess since they coming up the sidewalk they see me creeping around the corner but i'm not creeping around the corner because of the men i'm literally creeping around the corner because I, I don't want to get hunched but i guess it, it seems as if i'm creeping around the corner because the men arguing when I had to really, like, I stood there. Once I realized the man was arguing, I stood up like, oh, they arguing. So I see the man going back and forth. Now, the man, they were sitting down in chairs, like, on um, the lawn chairs that we take to, like, football games that we get, like, out of the dollar store and stuff. They sitting outside along the gate in those chairs. Now, one, this one particular man, they got the trunk open. So I'm guessing they had, like, the cooler with their liquor and they being stuff inside the trunk. So they had the trunk open. So as these two men are arguing and going back and forth with each other, my mama and her homegirl coming up the gate. All of a sudden, one man pulls out a gun. And the other man, like, they, I, the other man went, like, he went to pull out a gun. And they tussling between the gun. Like, both of them tussling between the gun. One man in the trunk and one man standing outside the trunk. And they tussling, like, for the gun. The car door is still standing right there. The car door open. Now, my mama coming up screaming, saying, get y'all ass in the gate. Get y'all ass in the gate, right? So as she's saying that, I'm still looking because I'm a kid. I'm literally like 10 years old, y'all. I'm a kid. I'm standing there. I'm like, what is they doing? Like, I'm like, oh, they got a gun, right? So I'm going to go get in the gate. And all of a sudden, I just, I remember vividly, y'all. Like, all of a sudden, I just heard, 
pow, pow, like, and I'm like, I jumped like two times, like pow, pow, like that. But I'm grabbing a handle. Mind y'all, everybody in the apartment building scattered. I remember grown men going up the stairs. I remember this one man who had dreads. I think he ended up getting killed. I remember him going upstairs, like running upstairs to get his gun. I don't know if he was related to the people or what, but I remember him going upstairs, like going to his apartment. He came outside with a long ass gun, like an AK-47. I remember him going upstairs to get his gun, but... At this time, my brother, and my job, my brother was already in the apartment building. So they running inside the house already because it's grown ups out there. And they done got up. They sitting in front of their door and stuff like that. So everybody done got up saying, go in the house, go in the house, go in the house. Now, one of my brothers was inside somebody else's house because, you know, it, we kids. So they just pushing people inside the house or whatever. So, boom. I just hear pow, pow. So I'm jumping like pow, pow, like this. My jaw just came from the stove. Still got snacks in my hand and everything. I grab the like I grab the door and I go inside the gate. But the gate, when the gate, the gate used to be really, really heavy. So when the gate closed, it a slam like doom, like it a slam. So I go inside the gate. All of a sudden, I see one of the mans on the floor. The man who got shot, he just laying on the floor. Now I see everybody grabbing their stuff and the the expedition. They closing the trunk of the expedition. They pulling off in the expedition. Everybody like call the police, call the police and stuff like that. So I'm looking. My mama steady screaming, "Go in the house, go in the house!" But mind y'all, I'm like stuck because I'm like, damn, somebody just got shot. Like I couldn't believe what was just happening because mind y'all, I'm just came from high and go hunt, just running from the stove. You get what I'm saying? So. I run inside the house. I finally get inside the house. And I remember we had a bird, a parrot. And the bird was saying, was mimicking what my mama was saying. So, boom. My mama comes inside the house. When she get in the house, she going off. She snapping out of the She come in the house and cold stole just started slapping me and jacking me up. Like, just cold stole went crazy on me. Like, slapping me and jacking me up. Like, oh, you standing out there being motherfucking grown. I told you to get your ass in the house. Now, her homegirl who she was with, I couldn't let me not say that oh, god forgive me because god forgive me. i couldn't stand her because my mama was the type y'all ever met those people that they the type of people that don't really say much until the next person say something and this is why i always speak up for myself and this is why i always be like i'm gonna say it because y'all scary and i'm not scary because i can't get no whooping because my mama was one of those type of people that only spoke up when somebody else say something i don't like those type of people like don't speak up or don't feel some type of way off another person feelings so the lady was saying to my mama like oh i don't know what you what you weren't getting in the house for you should have been ran in the house what you were standing out there for this that and the third so my mama feeding off what she's saying you don't even feel like that you i'm your child you don't even feel like that but you letting the next bitch come along and tell you oh i don't even know what you were standing up there what you doing still standing out there whatever so when the lady started making comments towards me being grown and stuff like that then all of a sudden now my mama feel like i'm grown now she's slapping me and jacking me up and pushing me in the room locking me making me go stay inside the room mind y'all we got a one bedroom apartment two big ass beds mattresses no sheets on the mattresses like this is how we was living so now i gotta sit in the room all day she let my brother them go in the living room and play their game and stuff but she making me sit in the room all damn day all because this lady said something because if she hadn't came in the house with you and said something you probably wouldn't even felt like that way you probably wouldn't hit me or nothing but you want to make yourself look so superior and like a mama this that and the third and like you feel the way she feel to the point where you would jack me up and hit on me and make me feel some type of way just to make this that's why i don't play when it comes down in terms of my children i don't play i feel how i feel towards them without letting anybody i don't care how you feel that's how you feel if that's not the feeling that i got towards the child i'm not gonna say nothing and i'm gonna not gonna hit them or chastise them because that's what you feel like i should be doing no the police ended up coming my mama like oh y'all my mama go back out the door with the lady she like oh y'all better not come out this door y'all better not come out this door or whatever like that y'all better not come out this door so they end up locking us in the house but of course my brother them and i we grown we opening the windows to see what was going on outside we see the man was dead because they came with the yellow tape the yellow scarf or whatever like that we see the man was dead we opening the door we looking the police coming the detectives coming around trying to question everybody and stuff like that trying to see what was going on or whatever the case may be so my mama had came in the house and had a long talk with me telling me oh because mind you i wasn't living with, i wasn't living with her i was in the custody of my grandmother already so she having this long talk with me telling me not to tell after she done slapped me up off another bitch feelings telling me not to tell my grandma telling me not to mention nothing that i seen what happened to other people telling me that she gonna get in trouble and she gonna go to jail 
I, if I was had enough sense, I would have said, you should go to jail slapping me off what another bitch say. Yeah, and I'm literally not even being funny. My mama literally, I remember this vividly. I know who the na lady name anyways is and all, but I'm going to just say, out of respect, I ain't going to say the lady name and stuff like that. But I know who the lady is and all. You literally only came in that house and slapped me up after that lady said something. You didn't even feel like that. Like, why would you do that? Like, anyways. So, yeah, that was one of the times that I actually saw somebody being unalive now i've been in shootouts before i've been in a house that got shot up before i've been grazed before and i've seen other things happen to people before but this was one of those times where for some reason i remember this one like yesterday y'all ever heard that song that said i spent my childhood in the wild hood that was me like i literally people be like dang you really lived so many different lives i really lived so many different lives from early on, situations like that is what kind of made me start resenting my mama because for some reason, I was never her most like child. Okay, so I'm my mama firstborn child and her only living daughter. My sister was tragically unalived. I already told y'all that. My mama's daughter, only other daughter besides me. And I'm her firstborn child and her only living daughter. She literally have like six boys, six or seven boys, and I'm the only girl, right? So it's like everything that will go down, it will always be affected on me, like when DCF would come to the house and I would literally try to lie for her and I was only a kid trying to lie for her. Guys didn't work out in her favor. Here I go getting whooped. Here I go getting jumped on. Here I go getting in trouble. Here I go getting snapped on for like no reason. Like she would always try to make it seem like, like I was just this problem. So I told this story on live, but I'm going to tell it again because now that I'm thinking about all this other stuff, it brings up this situation again. So... That was this one time we lived in Florida City. Florida City is like considered to be down south from Miami. It's Florida City, Florida, whatever the case, whatever the case may be, right? So we lived in Florida City, and my mom again would be out all night, leaving us in the house by ourselves. This was before my sister was tragically unalive. So at this time, remember, I'm seven years old. Seven years old. So my mama at this point, she had done left. She was out walking the streets. I don't know. I feel like my stepdaddy used to be out doing him, and she used to couldn't take it, and she used to be mad. But anyways, I remember my mama had left us at this lady named Margaret House. God bless her there. I think she died because I remember she had the HIV and she was dating a family member, somebody that was a part of our family member that's supposed to have the HIV also. But I think she had ended up dying. If I'm not mistaken, that lady died. But she was like this babysitter lady or whatever the case may be. But mama had left us at this lady house or whatever like that. So mind y'all, the house that they left us at, the water was off at the house. So the house was really, really stained. Like, because the house had no water. So, like, if we used the bathroom, we couldn't flush the toilet or nothing. The house was really, really stained. Right? So they had been out partying all night, getting high all night or whatever the case may be. And so the next morning, my mama came and got us. It had to be probably like 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm not lying to y'all. Y'all know, I tell y'all, I remember all the tragic events in my life. It had to be like 6 o'clock in the morning when my mama had came and got us, right? So when she had came and got us, she came and got us and we was like on bikes. So like she had a, a had a, was on a bike and she got an extra bike. So the bike that she was on was like a bigger bike and she had her and my two brothers on the bike. And she put me on another bike and was making me put my sister on the handlebars on that bike. Mind y'all, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. It got to be like I remember the dude, the dude in like in the air like i remember it had to be so early in the morning like she was still drunk and high from being out all night so the lady margaret lived in these apartment called lime grows apartments anybody that's from down south that'll probably see this you y'all already know what lime grove is so from lime grove i don't even know how i look now because i haven't been down there in years but from Lion Grove Apartments, there was this big old empty field. So you could go across this empty field, then there was this main road, you would cross that main road, and then go through another field, and our apartments were straight right there, right? By another corner store, right? And by a park. So boom. We was literally just going across the street to go home, but we riding on the bikes. My sister, who three years old at the time, she kept like slipping off the bike. I don't know if she was sleepy or why she was slipping off the bike or whatever the case may be, but... My mama thought that me at seven years old was responsible enough to make this kid go across the street on a bike at six o'clock in the morning with ease. So as we going across the street, we're going across the street on the bikes. Y'all, my sister kept falling off the bike. So my mama was like, oh, get on the bike, whatever the case may be. So I'm telling my mama, I'm like, I can't. She keep falling off the bike. Like, I'm trying to carry her on the bike, but she keep falling off the bike. What do you want me to do? 
So my mama, she got my brothers on the bike. Mind y'all, they have sleep. They they trying to wake up. They have sleep because it's six, seven o'clock in the morning. So we finally make it to the field right before we get to our apartment, right? The same apartment where this my same sister was tragically unalive. We finally get to that field that's in the back of the apartments right before we could go through our gate to get in our apartment. And when we get through that field, my sister fall off the bike. Mind y'all, I didn't push her off the bike or nothing. She literally just like fell off the bike. So I'm like, y'all, when I tell y'all, my mama stopped the bike, stopped the bike that she was on and turned around and slapped the dear life out of me. She slapped me so motherfucking hard. She was like, and don't ever, don't ever drop my motherfucking baby off the bike. Da, da, da. I don't, I don't want to say she called me a hoe. I don't remember her calling me a hoe, but I remember she was calling me out my name, like calling me bitches. And I think she had called me a witch or something like that. Like, she was like, don't ever drop my motherfucking baby off the bike. Da, da, da. Like, she was just cold stone snapping on me. And I was hard down crying. And I was so mad because I'm an Aries. I'm a fire sign. When somebody get me, I got to get you back. And I was at them stages back then. I was really growing my resent towards her. And I wanted to get her back real bad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to yai. Like, Lord, you say, I'm not going to yai. I wanted to get her back real bad, but I was a minor at the time. I was a kid. I couldn't do it. I waited till I turned 13. When I turned 13, that was the first time I got her back. That's the first time I fought her when I was 13. So that was when my resentment was starting to build up towards her. And I was really, really hurt because I literally didn't push my sister off the bike. Like, I didn't push off the bike. It was she kept falling off the bike. Like, she kept slipping off the bike. I don't know. She was only three years old. So I don't know if she was slipping off the bike or, like, was scared that she was going to fall off the bike. But I'm trying to hold her on the bike. Mind y'all, I'm a kid myself. I'm only seven. The bike don't have no training wheels on it. So I'm trying to keep a steady pace. She trying to, we literally just kids. Like, why are you getting so mad and frustrated with me? Like, I think that my stepdaddy was out doing him. And she probably was getting high, looking for him all night, looking stupid. And was mad that she couldn't find him per usual and just took that shit out of me. That's what I think. That's how I feel. Now that I got older, that's the realization that I have come to. That's what she was doing. So when we got back to the house, to the apartments, she made us lay down. She threw all of us in the beds, made us lay down and stuff like that. And I can remember just laying there under a sheet because we never used to have like spreads and stuff. I remember laying in the bed under a sheet. And then my stepdaddy had finally came to the house. And she, pussy, she would never address nothing that he do. And that's so messed up because that's why I am the way I am with men these days. Like, I don't play with men at all. When I tell y'all I don't play with men at all, I don't play with men at all. A man got one time to even think he gonna play in my face before I double play in his face and beat his ass. I don't play with men at all. I will beat me a man ass up so fast. So, he come home. She leaves us out there all this time while they just... Because, okay, the apartment that we had, it was like a one, it was like a one bedroom... But it was like the one bedroom part, they gave uh, the room to us. So the one bedroom part, it was like the front door was right there. And it was just a room right here, right? And it was two beds in there. And then you could open the door and go inside like the kitchen. It had like a um closet in there. But they made that part like a studio. So they made them a bed out of that part. And it was like the kitchen and stuff in there. So we literally, while she and there laid up, they done got hot all night, done went to sleep. We woke, we wake up. Now it's 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We wake up hungry. Then that later, we got to bang on the door for some food. We eating chicken and noodles like we was doing every night. Chicken and noodles. We got to bang on the door for food. And I'm still not her favorite. So who got to walk to the store to go get the food? Who going to get in trouble if they come back from the store with the wrong shit? Me, 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 me. So, yes, I spent my childhood in a wild hood. But this is a story about... The very first time I saw someone tragically being unalive. And what was the consequences about me sitting there watching somebody being tragically unalive. When I should have been supervised from the very beginning. Especially being that your kids was already removed from you for this very reason. No supervision. But to each is all you live and you learn they say you got to go through a lot of things so that you won't be able to be that way like you know so i'm nowhere near nothing like my mother was back in those days still is but i'm nowhere near like the like the way she was back in those days and i am so proud of myself for not being that mom and always being present able and willing to for my children because yeah i spent my childhood in the wildhood but yeah so Story time number two will be put out right after this one. Y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, and subscribe.
like comment and subscribe like comment and subscribe y'all been showing my channel a lot of love so i feel like i'm really bringing back authenticity 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 girl how you say that shit i really feel like i'm bringing back the authentic youtube that everybody wants to see because y'all been showing my channel a lot of love y'all love my story time so i'm gonna keep dropping story times for y'all y'all will get a vlog next week because i have a couple of dollars next, next week so i'll be able to do a few things for y'all next week so y'all will get a vlog next week until then i love y'all and i literally just sit here and fought through like it's like i'm married to y'all like through sickness and health to death do us part those were the words that we said from our heart so now when you say that you're leaving me i don't get that part <laughs> no i love y'all and i am always here for y'all we'll get another story time before the vlog drops and after the next story time y'all gonna get a vlog and y'all gonna keep getting them shorts y'all make sure y'all like my shorts too i see i've been showing my, my shorts a lot of love if you aren't already following me on tiktok follow me on tiktok table for two podcast my tiktok goes up so follow me on tiktok if you aren't already following me on tiktok i am also pleased to announce that i have a clothing brand dropping this summer should be in the middle or the ending of this summer my clothing brand should be up maybe even sooner than that i'm actually working on my website right now i'm working with my vendor i'm waiting on my samples to come in the mail so everything is going so good for me i love y'all thank y'all for supporting me like comment and subscribe